Yeah, thank you and hello everybody. This talk will be about automating uh, boring tasks with the Angular CLI and with schematics. And as Gerard told you, I'm Manfred, I'm a trainer and consultant for Angular, and I'm also part of the Google Developer Experts program. So let's start with a question. Have you ever tried to set up a modern JavaScript project manually? Because that involves so many things. For instance, you have to set up the compiler and the transpiler. You have to set up the package manager and download packages. You have to build a chain, a build chain that is optimized for bundle size and performance and so on. And you have to integrate testing tools. In addition to that, you have to integrate a Linda. And the good message about this is that there are tools out there, like the CLI, that are doing this for you. The Angular CLI, for instance, can be used for creating all this stuff automatically for you when it comes to an Angular project. And I think that's quite important because without such tools, you are just driving crazy. And I think this is what the Joker man in the epic comic called The Killing Joke, 1988, when he said something like, it takes just one bad project setup to make one sane man uh, uh, crazy. He didn't literally say this, but I think he meant this when he said something like this. And so it is quite important, as mentioned, to use something like the CLI. And as you have seen before, and as you will see now, it is quite easy to get started with the CLI. All it takes is just one comment, for instance, engine new project name to scaffold a new project. And then you can move into the folder of the project and generate a component with ng-generate component component name. And so the question arises if there is a way to tweak the CLI to create own stuff. For instance, to use an own uh, project setup, an own set of templates for a new project, or to use some other templates to create a completely own component type like this menu component here. And this is exactly what this talk is about. In this talk, I will show you how to do this with schematics, which is the uh, code generator, the scaffolding tool, dosing beyond the Angular CLI. I will show how to create custom schematics, as well as how to use parameters, and I will also show how to use templates. So let's get started. Let's talk about schematics and what it is. When it comes to schematics, as mentioned, you have the scaffolding tool used by the CLI itself. And schematics is the name of both the whole project as well as the code generators produced with this project. So when you are writing a code generator, it is also called a schematic. And there is another term that is quite useful. This term is called collection. A collection is just a set of code generators, a code with schematics. One word of caution here. Uh, schematics is currently an Angular Labs project, and this means that schematics is experimental. So there are breaking changes ahead. But nevertheless, I want to encourage you to give it a try to find out what it can do for you, to find out how it can uh, prevent you from driving crazy. And so also did other people in the community. For instance, the fox over there at Norval created a tool set called NX, and NX is both a library but also a code generator that creates a nice workspace for your Angular project, a nice workspace that can consist of several applications as well as of several libraries. On the other side, some days ago, the NGRX team that is providing a library for doing Redux in the Angular world also announced schematic support. The newest version of NGRX comes with a code generator that allows you to generate all the boilerplate code. So one important thing about schematics is that 
Uh, schematics, a code generator built with schematics is atomic, like a database transaction. That means that your current project isn't directly modified. Instead of this, you are using a staging area. The staging area, you will see it later, is uh, defined by a tree object in your source code. And within the staging area, you can modify existing source code and, of course, you can add new files. And as you can imagine, you can also delete files if you want. When you have done this in the staging area and when you have found out that everything works and everything is consistent, then you can uh, just write it back to your hard disk. And this makes schematics to put your current project from one consistent state into another one. So, of course, you are wondering how to create a custom schematic. And the answer is quite easy. You can create a schematic with a schematic. So, you can also leverage schematics to scaffold a new uh, schematics project. And this is quite easy. You just need to install the schematic CLI, and then you can uh, call this command schematics blank with the parameter name, and this creates a blank project for you. There is also another command. I like it more. It is called schematics schematic. This is also creating a new schematics project for you, but this schematics project will contain some sample schematics some sample code that is showing you how schematics work and how you can tweak uh, the existing things schematics brings for you. When you are scaffolding a new project, then it looks like this on the console. As you see here, it looks like uh, when you are scaffolding a new Angular project, there are some files created and some other stuff is npm downloaded. And now one thing is quite important. I'm calling it Manfred's first rule of surviving schematics. Please make sure that the used versions are the same version are, uh, as in your CLI generated project. That means when you are using the Angular CLI 168, which was the newest version some days ago, then you have to use those versions of schematics and uh, dependent tools. Otherwise, uh, hell breaks loose when you are mixing and matching versions. You know that from other areas of JavaScript development. And of course, after tweaking the versions, you have to npm install everything. What you see here is the project structure of a scaffolded Hello World schematics project. It is quite an easy project, and as you might imagine, it is also a NBM package, a NBM package with a node modules folder as well as with a package JSON. And this package JSON gets a special entry point pointing to a collection JSON. This collection JSON is describing the current schematics collection, this set with code generators. And in my example, this set of code generators just contains one schematics. It's the Hello World schematic. This schematic is described by a rule factory. It is put into the index.js file or in the index.ts file, which is down-leveled, of course, to an index.js file. And this rule factory is responsible for creating a rule that is, in turn, uh, creating all the files you want to have. This is how a rule factory looks like. It's just a simple function, a simple JavaScript or TypeScript function, and this function is returning a rule, and the rule itself is just another function, a function that is taking the tree and the context object. The context object provides some general objects for you, like a locker I'm using here. It also provides other objects that allows you to analyze the current uh, collection to find out which other schematics are part of the current collection. And you get a tree object, and as mentioned before, the tree object is just your staging area. You can use the tree object to create new files, to modify existing files, to delete files. 
And this is exactly what I'm doing here, because it's such a nice habit. I'm creating a file with the text Hello World, and in addition to that, I'm also debugging something to the console. As mentioned, this here is just the rule I've spoke about. So when you have everything in place, you can test it. And for testing everything, you just need to build it. And then you can call schematics. The point here points to the current project. This means that the current project is used as the collection. And Hello World points just to the code generator, to the schematic within the current project. You can also test everything within another project, within a demonstration application. And for this, you can npm install the whole collection, which is in turn just an npm package within the demo application, or you can link it. And then you can call schematics. In this case, you have to mention the name of the NBM package, which is Hello World, as well as the name of the code generator, which is also Hello World. Instead of this, you can also leverage the CLI uh, using the Angular CLI. The uh, current command is quite similar. Uh, instead of calling schematics, you are using ng-generate and then you can uh, mention your current uh, thing you want to generate out. So let's have a demonstration for this. You know, green is the hope, they are saying. And here I have my Hello World project. When we look into the package JSON, we see this special entry point, this special entry point with the name schematics, and it is pointing to my collection file. So let's have a look into this collection file. Here we see that all my code generators are described, and my one and only code generator is the Hello World generator with this description here and with this factory. This factory, download it later, is uh, located within Hello World index, and the factory function has the name Hello World. Yeah, and here we have this Hello World thing. It is just my function that is returning the rule we've spoken about before. So let's switch to the console. Let's npm build everything. And then let's call this schematics. Schematics dot hello world. Yeah. As you see, uh, this is just writing out my debug message to the console, and here a hello DXD is created. So let's have a look into the hello DXD. And now you see the system cannot find the file. Uh, somehow it didn't work. So what did uh, happen here? Um, the thing that happened here is that when you are using a local schematics, it is used within the try run, which means that it just is changing your tree, it is changing your staging area, but the staging area isn't written back to your project, to your hard disk. So meanwhile, we know that everything worked, but nothing has been written back. When we want to write it back, we have to set debug to false. This is just the case when we try out the schematic within its own project. Ooh. Here we go, debug equals false. And now we have our hello DXD. Awesome, okay. This is nothing uh, that will cause me to call at home, but uh, it is a beginning. So after having a look at this Hello World project, let's go one step further. Let's speak about using parameters. And for this, I want to switch to another more exciting example, an example I'm using to show a lot of aspects of schematics. It's an example that is scaffolding the site menu here. And the site menu uh, consists of several files. For instance, there is a site menu item that is just describing one menu item of your menu. 
there is the Angular component that consists of an HTML file as well of a TypeScript file, and there is a service. And in addition to that, both the item as well as the service are optional. You can opt into them. That means that they are generated, but you don't need to generate them. Otherwise, uh, you will get some hard-coded menu items within the HTML file. And this is how I want to execute my case study. I just want to tell the Angular CLI, please generate a new navigation item, a new menu, call it site menu, and then I want to use this switch here, menu service, to indicate whether the service shall be used or not. This is the project structure I'm using. It is just another collection, and this collection, one more time, points to a code generator, and this code generator, of course, has a rule factory. But in addition to that, it has also two files describing the possible parameters you can pass at command line. There is a schema JSON containing a JSON schema. This is the, my most favorite sentence within this presentation. Just let me repeat it. I really like it. The JSON, no, the schema JSON the JSON schema, and there is a file containing a class, and this class also describes everything the JSON schema describes. The class also reflects the possible command line parameters. And this is what this class can look like. There are some parameters like a past name or some paths like the app root or the current path or the source directory, and there is the flag for the menu service. So one thing is quite important here. The first things are automatically passed by the Angular CLI. So you don't have to bother about them. You don't have to pass them manually. The Angular CLI will find out the right values for these parameters, and it will pass it. And this is your custom stuff you want to pass. When we look into the source code, this is my rule factory with the rule. And as you see here, it gets my menu options object passed, and I can use all those properties and uh, find out what to do when generating source code. Of course, to implement our case study, we need other things. We need templates. We need templates that are generating the source codes we want to have. And for this, I've just introduced a new folder within my uh, project. It is called Files. This Files folder contains several templates that will be used when the uh, scaffolding takes happen. And this is what such a template looks like. As you see here, it just looks like an ordinary PHP file. Who has used PHP so far? OK, some of you, yes. I'm be honest, I've used it too. I was young and needed the money. And <laughs> as you can see here, uh, you can just put some text between those delimiters, those delimiters that are executed during the scaffolding process. And that what is produced here is directly written to the output. In this case, I'm using a past property, the past property name, which contains the value of the parameter name, and I'm using the function classify. And this classify function is also passed to the template, and it formats a string so that it can be used as a class name. It's just a helper function. One nice thing about files, about template files, is that the template names are also templates. Those file names can also consist of other placeholders. Those placeholders are placed between uh, lower, lower cases, yeah, lower cases, underscores. And for instance, here we have a past property, the past property path. It's a property that comes from the parameters the CLI is passing. And here we have another past property. It's called name, the name of our menu, side menu, top menu, 
or something like this. And here we have a bust function that is exercised, uh, that is executed. Uh, this bust function gets the name parameter and it is just formatting this name. This syntax that you see here with the at sign is something like a pipe at the command line or a pipe within Angular. You can say that the name parameter is just piped into this dasherize function. Yeah, when we want to execute the templates, we one more time need our factory and we also need to create a rule. And within this rule, we can create a template source. In the case of schematics, a source is just something that is written into your staging area. And as you see here, my template source is just built upon all the files in the folder files. This apply function takes all the files and pass them to the uh, mentioned other functions like filter templates, like template, like move. Filter templates, as you might imagine, is just filtering the available templates. It is, it is checking whether we need the template service or the template item, and if not, it is filtering it out. In addition to that, template is just calling all the templates and it is passing those two objects, the string utils object as well as the options object. The options object contains the past command line options and the string utils object contains some string util functions like classify we've seen before. And as I'm using the spread operator here, the three points, not the objects themselves are passed, but they are properties. So that means that all the properties from options are passed, like the name property, the path property, the source property, the app root property, and so on. And all the functions from the string utils object are passed, like, you know, dashify or glasserize and so on. Yeah, and then at the end we are using move and move is just moving everything into place, moving everything to the right location within our source tree. Move also takes care about replacing the placeholders within the template names. Yeah, and after this you can build a rule upon this and for this you are normally just chaining existing rules like the chain rule, which is just executing other rules in order. Or here I'm using the branch and merge rule, which is branching the current tree, doing some modifications and then merging everything back. And within this, I'm using merge with to merge my template source into the current tree. That's more or less all you need to use some templates to generate custom code. Okay, let's have a look at this. So, here we go. Let's one more time have a look into our package JSON and you see one more time it points to the collection JSON. Let's have a look to the collection JSON. It describes my menu schematic and it points to my factory, it's located within the folder menu. As I'm not mentioning a file name here, it's automatically picking up the index.js or index.ts. We have a description and we are pointing to a schema. And when we look into this schema JSON with the JSON schema, then we see all the properties here. For instance, the name and the path and the app root. And when we scroll down, we see our menu service flag. This is also reflected by my menu options class. You see the same stuff in here. And when we look into the index TS, we see that I am first of all creating the template source. I'm just using all templates within files and I'm passing those templates to all those functions. And then here I'm building up a new rule that is merging the template source into the tree. 
Here I'm doing also additional stuff that uh, is modifying existing source code. This is also possible. You can also modify existing source code, for instance, to in order to register a new component with an existing module. Okay, let's try this out. Let's move to the application and let's call my Angular CLI. I say, hey, Angular CLI, generate a new menu for me and call it side menu and use a menu service and use your force, override existing files if they exist. And as you see here, oh, I've produced a typo, menu service, is that right? Yeah, then you see that also the menu service is scaffolded out. So let me quickly look into this project. Let's move to side menu. And let's have a look to side menu item. As you see here, the template has been executed and the placeholders within the template have been removed uh, or have been replaced with the placeholders. I've passed with the uh, parameters I've passed. Okay, nice thing. So let's go one step further. I came up with a nice idea that might be interesting for you. The idea was to generate whole Angular applications with this mechanism, to do something like Angular on Rails. Perhaps you know Ruby on Rails. And for this, I've started an open source project. It is called Angular CRUD, and it creates CRUD forms out of a model description. It is creating forms like this to search for hodls or to select hodls, and it is creating something like this, a detail form. Of course, you can do a lot of additional stuff with this, and perhaps you find this useful. In this case, just check it out, look over it, give feedback, or uh, do some pull requests. If you say, hey, that what Manfred told us is very interesting, then you can look up additional information about this. And when you say, hey, that what Manfred said is totally uninteresting, then uh, look also up those material. Perhaps you'll find it more interesting than my talk. <laughs> so here I have, for instance, one hyperlink that points to a very nice introduction to schematics. This introduction has been written by the Angular team itself, by the father of schematics itself, Hans Larsen, who works for the Angular CLI team. And you also find my tutorial, my case study, which consists of three articles so far. It guides you through creating this case study I've presented here. And here you also find a hyperlink that points to my open source project that allows you to scaffold all Angular applications. Let me come to a conclusion. You have seen that you can automate boring tasks with the Angular CLI. And you have also seen that currently the Angular CLI, or no, not the Angular CLI, that currently Schematics is a labs project. That means that there are breaking changes. That means that the API isn't final so far. But nevertheless, it's the official solution in the world of Angular. And there are some nice existing products out there that are using schematics. For instance, the CLI itself is using schematics as well as NX, as well as the new tools for NGRX released some days ago. In addition to that, you have seen that Schematics is using a staging area. That means you aren't messing around with your current project. You can do all the modifications within a sandbox within the staging area. And when everything is OK, you can commit it. You can write it back to the hard disk. You have also seen that you can use templates like in PHP or in other uh, template-based programming technologies. And you have seen that you can write rules to create new files and to modify existing source code. 
Another thing that might be interesting for you is not to create a whole new schematic, but to download an existing one and to tweak it, to just tweak those PHP-like uh, templates so that your own source code is generated, the source code you need for your project. And at the end, I just want to encourage you to try everything out you've seen today to uh, make your development process a bit faster and to automate boring tasks to keep your sanity. Okay, here you have my contact data. You will find everything I've talked about on my blog in some minutes. Follow me on Twitter and thank you well. <laughs>